don't care what side of the aisle you're on. I don't care what your opinion is about all types of issues that we face in the world today. I don't think that there's too many things that a lot of people agree on in this world. But one thing that I could suggest that we can all agree on is something is wrong. See? We live in a world where something is wrong. So many people try to figure it out. Something's wrong when a lie has become a truth and a truth is now considered a lie. Something's wrong when the hunger for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is openly hijacked by individuals who crave control. Something is wrong when the streets can easily be filled with protesters and churches are in desperate search of prayer warriors. Something is wrong when the word of God declared in the pulpit is considered hate speech and censored and public officials who open their mouth and blatantly lie are called servants. Something's wrong. Something's wrong when you can choose to murder an unborn child and call it health care. Something's wrong when we have become what the Bible describes as lovers of selves, despisers of good, lawless people, greedy people, boasting, dishonoring of our parents, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Church, something is wrong. What's wrong? One word, sin. What can we do about it? Today, I haven't come to discuss all of the symptoms of sin or to talk about all of the ways to sin. The thing that I have brought to you today is the one thing that can conquer sin, and that is the cure. This cure is totally free. It has been paid for by the only begotten Son of God. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what you're currently in. This is the only thing that can make a way where there seems to be no way. This cure is 100% effective. No one has ever received it and can claim that it failed them. This cure conquers darkness because it is saturated with the glorious light of the Shekinah Spirit of God himself. This cure is defeated death, hell, and the grave because Jesus said, he who believes in me shall never die. This cure calms your fears because he is the Lord, our light, and our salvation. Of whom shall we be afraid? This cure will cleanse you from every sin, every yoke of bondage, every shackle of adversity because your sins, though they were scarlet, they're now white as snow. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's read about this cure in Psalms 107, verse 20 and following. If you're there, say amen. amen. The Bible says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Heavenly Father, let us be reminded today of your goodness, your mercy, your grace. Let those who have been redeemed by your power declare to those who need to meet your son Jesus what a mighty God we serve. As we stand in this sanctuary, ever mindful that you are our hope, you are our source, and you are our king, let us celebrate your goodness in our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. To all of God's children said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. I encourage you, go home and read the 107th Psalm. Read it until you memorize it because it is so filled with reminders of things that we have to continually be focused on. We live in a world that loves to forget the important things and all we do is rehearse the unimportant things. 
There are people right now who can tell you numbers and statistics and issues and data and stats that don't matter. And forget the one thing that really does matter. When you read the 107th Psalm, it is saturated with one reminder after another. It begins in the first verse. It says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. What a wonderful reminder. Are you breathing today? Give thanks to the Lord. Did you get to see the sun come up? Give thanks to the Lord. Do you have clothes on your back? Give thanks to the Lord. The first reminder, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. I'm so glad that there is no expiration date on the mercy of God. And then the next line is another reminder. Let the redeemed, those words all by themselves are a reminder. A reminder of what? A reminder that you've been redeemed. The Bible says rejoice in the joy of your salvation. So when somebody reminds you that you've been redeemed, what they're saying to you is don't forget who you were before you met Jesus. Don't forget that you were lost and you were on your way to hell. Don't forget that if he hadn't come and paid the price for your redemption, you would be meeting with hell itself whenever you breathed your last breath. Don't forget where you were when he healed you. Don't forget where you were when he saved your marriage. Don't forget where you were when he turned your life around. Don't forget where you were when he broke the chains of bondage and addiction off of your life. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, so let them say this is who I was before I met him but now that he set me free whom the sun sets free is free indeed the psalmist pleads with the redeemed oh that men would give thanks unto the Lord for his goodness Oh, that men would give thanks unto the Lord because he delivers them out of destruction. Oh, that men would give thanks unto the Lord for the work that he's done in the lives of the children of men. Why is it repeated over and over and over? Because we need a reminder that we constantly have a reason to rejoice. And the reason we rejoice is because our God sits on the throne and he rules in power. He rules in truth. His name is Jehovah and there is none likened unto him. There's another reminder to the redeemed in this psalm. And the reminder is this, there are all kinds of ways to get into trouble. Anybody in this room, anybody watching over online or television today can testify there's more than one way to get into trouble? Are you married? There are all kinds of ways to get into trouble. Verse four, it says they wandered into the wilderness They got in trouble. Why did they do it? Because in their own foolish pride, they thought they knew where to go. They thought they knew how to get there. They thought they could take care of everything on their own. Have you ever met a do-it-yourself Christian? I don't need God. I'll tell him where I'm headed and he'll meet me there. You're wandering. Maybe it's in the wilderness of your work. Maybe it's in the wilderness of your home. Maybe it's in the wilderness of the world that we live in. But the reality of it is, the Bible says, his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You can't wander in this world. You have to follow somebody. May I recommend Jesus? Verse 11, it says, they rebelled. Stubbornness will make you wander on your own. Rebellion is when you give into your own pride and you say, I know what's best for me. Verse 11, they rebelled, they despised the counsel of the Most High. There are all kinds of things that you can reject in this world, but the one thing you cannot do well when you reject is the counsel of the Most High. It led them into trouble. They fell down and there was no one to help. That's trouble. It says in transgressions and iniquity, it left them afflicted at the gates of death. When your life is at the gates of death, how many of you say you have found T-R-O-U-B-L-E, trouble? The first reminder, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Why? Because there are all 
kinds of ways to get into trouble. You can walk into trouble. You can wander into trouble. You can work your way into trouble. You can talk your way into trouble. You can worry your way into trouble. You can whine your way into trouble. Believe me, there's all kinds of ways. You can vote your way into trouble. But here's the good news. For all of the ways that there are to get into trouble, there's only one way out. Read the psalm. Every time that they found themselves in trouble, it didn't matter how they got there. They wandered into trouble. They worried into trouble. They rebelled into trouble. Whatever it was that put them in trouble, the Bible says over and over, they cried unto the Lord. Every time they found trouble, they cried unto the Lord. There are all kinds of ways for you to get into trouble, but there's only one way for you to get out of trouble, and that is cry to the one who can do something about your distress. No matter how you got in trouble today, no matter where you find yourself this morning, if you're wandering in a wilderness of need, God is an ever-present help in a time of trouble. If you're lost in a maze of confusion, God is an ever-present help in a time of trouble. If you're bound in chains of addiction, cry unto the one who can set you free and make a way where there seems to be no way. Are you broken today? Cry unto him. Are you weary today? Cry unto him. Are you tired today? Cry unto him. Cry out to God because he'll hear you. He'll deliver you. He is an ever-present help and his answer is on the way. Do you need a divine touch from the Lord? When you speak the word of God aloud, you release his promises over your life. The blessings of the Lord fill every part of your existence. The God who created heaven and earth is the God who can heal you today, heart, soul, mind, and body. With your special gift of any amount this month, we will send you a copy of our book, The Power to Heal, plus a vial of anointing oil. Use this gift to pray God's word over you and your family and anoint those you love with this oil. For your generous gift of $200 or more, we'll also include a unique communion set made of olive wood, handcrafted by the Sheltered Workshop in Southern Israel. As an extra bonus, you will also receive our Healing Scriptures USB. When you read these selected scriptures, you'll release the healing power of the Word of God in your life. See these gifts today. Call the number on screen or go to jhm.org healing. Cry out to God because He's the one who sets the captives free. The psalmist in Psalms 107, verse 14, it says, He broke their chains into pieces. It's another reminder of why we should rejoice because chains that are broken into pieces cannot bind you anymore. You know, it'd be a good time for me to get some chains. Oh, praise God. I mean, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. It'd be an even better time for me to get some volunteers. I got any volunteers? Good to meet you. Nice to have you. Thanks for being here. Why aren't you wearing boots? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Bible says that they cried unto the Lord and he broke their chains into pieces. Now, oftentimes what we want to tell ourselves is that I've been put in chains by the enemy. That's not true. The Bible says in the New Testament that Jesus Christ went to the cross and he made a public spectacle of powers and principalities, meaning that the chains of sin are broken. But the chains that you wear are the chains you made for yourself. And in every chain, there are multiple links. And the way that we work is we allow link one to become our primary problem, but then we connect all of these other things to it. Let's call this link offense. Have you ever known anybody who was chained up by their offenses? Suddenly they're mad because they were mistreated and their mistreatment leads to a drinking problem. Well, I'm upset and so I need to relax. All of a sudden, the drink wears off, and then it turns into a spending problem. 
And then it turns into another problem and another problem and another problem and another problem and another problem. And finally, you get all the way down here into these chains. Go ahead, hold out your hands, brother. See, you've been cuffed before. You know how to do this. This is (laughs) all of these chains. All of the problems, all of the habits, all of the arguments, all of the stubbornness, all of the pride, all of the foolishness, all of a sudden, he's bound up in every one of these links, and there's nothing he can do about it. My friend here, follow his example. It might not be applicable, but it'll work. Yeah. He comes to church. He looks down, and he sees these other guys are wearing boots. He decides he's going to go out and he's going to buy him some boots because he's coveted his neighbor's shoes. He doesn't have enough money to buy the boots, but he goes out and he spends it anyway. He starts spending problems, and the Bible says that the borrower is slave to the lender. He's trying to keep up with the Joneses and the Smiths and everybody else. He finds himself working more for Visa and MasterCard than he is for himself. And all of a sudden, he starts to doubt whether or not God's a provider. He says, I don't think I need to tithe anymore because I've been given my 10% and God hadn't given me that 100% return. Now he starts playing arithmetic games with God and he's mad because God hadn't kept his promises on his schedule. And so he quits the church. You say, all this started over a pair of boots? I'm telling you. People come up with the craziest reasons to get mad at God. This guy, he got chained up because his candidate didn't win. And he said, I'm going to New Zealand. But then he found out what a price to New Zealand and the plane ticket cost, and he stayed. <laughs> and he got bitter. He got upset. He said, we prayed, and we fasted, and this is what we got in return. And there's all kinds of ways and all kinds of times and all kinds of things and all kinds of reasons why people get all chained up. And you get stuck in these shackles and chains, and you come to church, and you can't get your hands in the air because they're chained right here. You go home and you can't fold them in prayer because they're chained right here. The Bible says give and you can't reach for your wallet because they're chained right here. Chained by your prejudice, chained by your past, chained by all of the things that you have on your long list of reasons why every link in this chain is valid. And suddenly your wife don't want to be with you because you're all chained up and your friends don't want to hang around you because you're all chained up and your boss says we're going to cut back at the office and you're the first to go because you're all chained up. So somebody comes by and says, let me give you a little bit of advice. You don't need to spend so much money. They only took one link out of your chain. You still got the lying problem, the cheating problem, the drinking problem and all these other problems because you're all chained up. Anybody know what these chains feel like? What's the cure for the chain? The Bible says he sent the cure. He sent his word and he healed them. Verse 14, he broke the chains in pieces. Follow me, John chapter one. It says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God and nothing was created without him. And then in verse 14 of John 1, it says, And the Word became flesh, and it dwelt among us. What did Jesus Christ come from heaven to earth to do? He came not to break a link in your chain. He came to break every chain into pieces. The day that you came to meet Jesus Christ, He walked into your life, and He said, Sin can no longer hold you. Your past can no longer have you bound. Your debt has been paid. Your problems have been solved. I've conquered the grave. I've cured the sickness. I've broken the bondage of addiction. I've broken the bondage of yesterday. Who you said you were, you are no longer. Because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Child of God, if it was your past, he broke the chain. If it was debt, he broke the chain. If it was sickness, he broke the chain. If it was fear, he broke the chain. If it was doubt, 
he broke the chain. If it was worry, he broke the chain. If it was sorrow, he broke the chain. If it was death, he broke the chain. He broke the chains into pieces. You're no longer bound because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Oh, that men would bless and magnify and exalt his mighty name. Why? 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 I'll tell you, because he did it. He did it. You couldn't have done it. He had to do it. When you were broken, he was the only one who could mend you. When you were bound, he was the only one who could set you free. When you got yourself in such a mess, you didn't even like yourself. He loved you so much, he died for you. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If we've been redeemed, we've got to have something to say about it. If we've been set free, we've got to give him thanks for it. If he's been good to us, we've got to tell others that his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord because he satisfies the longing soul and he fills the hungry with goodness. Give thanks to the Lord because he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. We've been bought out of death, hell, and the grave. We've been snatched out of the hand of the enemy. We've been ransomed by the blood and purchased in grace divine. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let them say, God did it. 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 And he's worthy of all of our praise. One of the problems that we have in the world we live in today, the redeemed are silent. We have to be reminded, speak up. Tell somebody. Tell everybody who Jesus is and what he's done. How do you think Jesus feels? When you walk out into the assembly, when you go out into the city, and people say, are you a Christian? Uh, well, I mean, I, 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 I believe I mean, I, 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 I don't know what's right for everybody. I just know what's right for me. You do you. I'll do me. Constantly throughout this psalm, we're reminded, oh, 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 that men would give thanks. It's as if I can hear the angels in heaven that are too many to be numbered standing around the throne, seeing the glory of God, knowing how good he's been to us down there, telling us from heaven above, oh, that you would give thanks. They've seen the goodness of heaven. They've seen the horror of hell. They've seen where you would have been had it not been for Jesus. And they're saying, you better give thanks. So that's how I want to end this service today. I think there's a lot of us in this world that have spent too much time complaining about what we can't control instead of thanking the God who's in control. So I want the redeemed of the Lord in this house to stand to their feet. And for just a few minutes, I want you to say so. I want you to lift your hands toward heaven and begin telling God, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for my salvation. Thank you for my redemption. Thank you for my provision. Thank you for my protection. Thank you that when I was tormented, you brought me peace that surpassed all understanding. 
Thank you that when I was worried, you made a way and you brought me out. Thank you that when my life was broken, you picked up the fragments and the pieces and you put me back together. Thank you that when my marriage was about to be destroyed and go under, you pulled it out of the hole and you brought us back to solid ground. Thank you that when my children were off in the far country, you put them under house arrest with the Holy Spirit and you kept them until they could get back to the cross. Thank you that when the doctor's diagnosis said it was going to be bad, the great physician stepped in and he healed me and he set me free. Thank you that when my business was burdened, you became the provider. Thank you that when I fell to my knees and I called on your name, you heard me and you answered me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you moved mountains I couldn't even touch. You've made a way where I couldn't even go. You've been with me through thick and through thin. You've stayed right beside me. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, you've embraced me. Your joy is my strength. Your hope is my foundation. Your name is above every name. So, Father, in this sanctuary today, I just lift my hands and I raise my voice and I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you because you are good and your mercy endures forever. I thank you because you've delivered us from our destructions. I thank you because when we were undeserving, you still poured out your grace divine. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that when we didn't know, we could look to you and you were the answer. Heavenly Father, I rejoice today with exceedingly great joy that you sent your word and you healed us and you delivered us. And today we have victory in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for joining us today. We pray God's blessings over you and those you love. Thank you, Legacy Partners, for your faithful prayer and financial support. Your generosity enables us to take all of the gospel to all of the world and to every generation. We pledge to take the bold truth of God's word across the nations of the world in everything that we do. Thank you for making a true kingdom impact in the lives of millions. God bless you. Hagee Ministries continues to proclaim the unadulterated truth of God's word around the globe. Thanks to our legacy partners, it's the continued faithfulness of our partners that enables us to provide hope, health, and education to the young mothers and their children that call the Sanctuary of Hope home. As we walk this road together, we are providing humanitarian aid across Israel and helping with relief efforts and community service initiatives at home and abroad. Together, we are transforming the nations of the world for Jesus Christ. We are excited to reach the younger generations as we expand into areas such as Apple TV, Roku, podcasts, social media, and live web streaming. Your action today can become part of your legacy. Become a legacy partner. Call the number on the screen or go to jhm.org slash partner. You've been watching Hagee Ministries. If you need prayer, call our prayer line or visit our website. Be blessed and join us tomorrow.